So I think that's the signal for your talk. So it's a pleasure to um, start the second session of today. I hope you had a good coffee break. And the first talk will be John Joseph Carrasco. who will talk about Etudes Ineffective Double Carby. Hi, well, uh, it's fantastic to see all of you. It's really been such such a thrill to, to see so many familiar faces and to put uh, some new faces to names for papers uh, I've, I've been reading avidly over the past year. Um, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get started. I think uh, first I'd like to introduce the cast of my collaborators. Um, this is this is a bunch of people I've been working with uh, a lot over over the past uh, couple of years. Um, Ingrid, Ingrid, uh, you you you've met earlier this week. Uh, Lorenzo, you've you've heard at Amplitudes in the past, and Suna, Nick, and Aslan are. Uh, our graduate students at Northwestern, and uh, Matt, Matt's a spectacular cosmologist um, who, who I've really been enjoying working with recently. I'd also like to mention Bogdan Stuika, who's a piatic string theorist, who's, who's doing some really fascinating stuff uh, with string tree-level amplitudes that I can't talk about today, but I'd like you to, to encourage you to reach out to and invite him for talks and uh, a master's student we had who was on uh, one of these first double copy, um, double copy effective field theory papers. Okay, so without further ado, let me, let me get started. And let me, let me just clarify that at the beginning, I'm gonna be talking about a functional graph-based double copy. So, so the, uh, the, the nouns, the objects in, in the language we'll be talking about today are going to be graphs. And this is, this is, the, this is the, you know, this is going to be color kinematics and functional representations, like we use at loop level. Even when I'm talking at tree level, I'll use functional representations where the same topology gets stressed with the same function, right? And so if you, if you have a graph that's the same topology with different labels, then you just change the labels in your function, right? Um, so yeah, each topology. Something like this, right? Uh, gets its own function. So this means that uh, certain algebraic rules like Jacobi identities and stuff like this, these become functional constraints on a span of functions, right? They know, so you can linearize, you can linearize at tree level. Um, if you're willing to uh, to let to let each graph each graph each graph label get its own function, um, but you get a remarkable compression amount of information you have to specify if you make these dressings functional. So there's a small number number of basis graphs. Um, uh, and these these encode the full amplitude. And so, for example, at tree level, for gluons, you only need to specify, you know, the uh, the half ladder graph or the multi peripheral graph per multiplicity, and this one graph encodes everything. So you get all the other topologies by Jacobian away from this one graph, and so you just specify a function for this one graph, and you've got uh, you've got the entire amplitude. Um, and uh, and there's there's a few reasons there's a few reasons why I'm going to focus on talking about uh, double copy in this framework. Um, I think I think they, they come down to a certain practicality. Uh, color kinematics makes locality manifest. As it has to, it's a graph by graph game. Right, and if, as long as you dress your your graphs with uh, with uh, local functions, then locality is going to be manifest, and it preserves gauge invariance. 
Now, this isn't such a big deal if uh, all your external states are scalars, right? But if you aspire to have external states that are either vectors or gravitons, um, then, then having building blocks that you combine together in various ways that preserves gauge invariance uh, really, really uh, is a set of tools that's, that's very useful. Um, and so, 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 so that, that's what's going on here. Um, uh, and and I, I'd summarize it, if you want local gauge invariant expressions, the motto is you just need a small number of building blocks. That you combine in various ways to get predictions in a whole web and a whole web of theories. All right, so what's going on with, I don't know, let's try this guy, double copy. So of course, there's there's this old story that 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 some of us grew up with, um, you know that gravity equals you know yang mill squared, and that the right way to calculate gravity theories is really to calculate gauge theories uh, and do clever things with those results. Um, and this 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 is this has been right this this has been part of part of our story for a really long time since the 80s uh, from KLT. Um, and, and it makes sense that this plays really well with uh, Susie and uh, related effective field theories, right? And so this is, this, is, this is part of a conversation that we've been having for a while. And as long as you internalize the type of games that are happening here, then, um, then you're not so surprised by the fact that that you can extend it to supersymmetric theories or or talk about uh, effective field theories that are related to to various games you could play with yang mills or massive yang mills and, and so on um but i want to talk about a couple of surprises that that showed up or at least you know deep surprises to to me that that's that's changed the way the way i look at this and and has made me a lot more flexible with the type of questions uh, I ask, and and as we're searching for the sort of, you know, quantum nouns and verbs to describe our invariant predictions, I think I think it's uh, it's 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 useful to be flexible. And so so these 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 are these are just some some spectacular things that people have discovered over the past ten years or so um, that that I think that that point points towards a certain a certain flexibility in description. Uh, and one, and this this just blew me away when I saw it um, is that the open string at the tree level you know but with increasing results at, at loop levels spectacular people do spectacular calculations and realize uh, fantastic fantastic structure the open string you can talk about as a field theory double copy between Yang Mills and a magical scalar. That includes all the alpha prime corrections. Um, and this was, this was first uh, presaged, I think, by, by some really remarkable papers by uh, Taylor and Steberger as they were talking about, um, uh, you know, open strings as 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 certain transforms of of, of supergravity, um, but then really clarified by this this paper of of, uh, of Johannes Brodel and Oliver and Stefan on um, just showing that you can really write down uh, open string amplitudes, Jan Payton open string amplitudes in terms of, uh, you know, a field theory double copy between, uh, between scalars that encode all the alpha prime corrections and, um, and, 
and just normal normal yang mills and so uh and that's just that's just that's just that was just bananas to me so this is this is all orders in alpha prime um and 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 one of the things this and oh i and just to you know just to, to make links in people's heads so so this is this is what what uh oliver carlos and i called z theory right this 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 uh this these these scalar these these this this putative effective field theory carries all orders and higher derivative corrections to scalars to a bijoint scalar that you uh that you can double copy with yang mills and end up uh end up with an open open superstring um right and so yes yeah, so this includes all orders in alpha prime but but something else is it it turns string theory klt into a uh, field theory klt uh with a higher derivative corrected yang mills um and this is uh this, this this i just thought was super fascinating as well so so the notion is you can write the open string tree level as, and so this is the Shen Payton dressed open string, right? So it's got it's got stringy color and got all the kinematics um, as a sum over cubic graphs between some uh, some graph weight, I'll give it a little a little z, and some some uh, graph weight that's really uh, super Yang Mills vectors, you know, over propagators. So the normal the normal color kinematics story. Um, at tree level, and you're summing over all the cubic graphs. Um, and uh, and what's what's going on here is this guy, this the Z theory weight is you know it's got FABCs and it's got DABCs and uh, and kinematics, right? So it's got scalar weights, um, right? And this guy just has our normal momenta and polarizations. Um, and these guys obey Jacobian anti-symmetry. So this isn't this isn't some some fancy variant of of color kinematics. This is plain vanilla adjoint type color kinematics. It's just you know cubic graphs. As you're dressing massless cubic propagators with something, you know this guy that contains all orders in alpha prime and contains color factors, right? But these combine ways to let them obey a Jacobian anti-symmetry graph by graph, um, right? And so, and because because these obey the same exact color rules, just like you know normal color weights made up of you know FABCs, just like normal color weights made up of FABCs the open string is gauge invariant, right? It preserves the reliance of the Yang Mills. The Yang Mills relies on having color weights to satisfy Jacobian anti-symmetry to combine it to something that's gauge invariant. And so this preserves the gauge invariance of, uh, of Yang Mills, but promotes this uh, to, to all orders in alpha prime. And you get an open super string. Um, let me just, Emphasize how this turns a string theory KLT into a field theory KLT. Uh, so I can I can I can look at the I can Shan Payton strip this guy. So I can I can look at the coefficient in front of each trace, if you like. And so I can write you know O S I where I refers to the Shan Payton ordering as some Z I field theory double copied with. Yang Mills, um, uh, this is the champagne ordering. Uh, right, and so all this means is I would normally write S M minus one, you know, trace T one, T I, two dot 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 T I N, then O S I. Right, so this is what I mean. By champagne ordering, so the color ordered open string amplitude um, 
is just given as a field theory KLT between something that encodes all orders of alpha prime scalars and Yang Mills. And the closed string we know as the open string with the field theory KLT. Right, but if we just plug in, we see that this is just going to be a Yang Mills field theory KLT with Z, ZI string theory KLT IJ with CJ uh, field theory KLT with the angles. All right, but the point is this guy, this guy obeys field theory relations. All right, this obeys the n minus two factorial you know, Kleist Koif relations and the n minus three factorial basis, or sometimes called BCJ relations. Um, right. And so you can interpret this as a higher derivative corrected A Yang Mills. All right. And so we've got now both the open string and the closed string as field theory double copies. Um, yeah, so, so, so that, that, that was fascinating to me. And we had endless discussions, um, with everybody I could speak to about this, uh, because, because it, it was really wild. And one thing, you know, one, one thing that came up in conversations is maybe, um, maybe you can always do this, right? Maybe, maybe, maybe there's nothing, there's nothing special about string theory that you can write it in terms of field theory double copy. Maybe if you just pull off, pull off something that obeys Jacobian anti-symmetry, what's left is going to be, you know, uh, Jacobian anti-symmetry anyway. So you can just stride, just pull it off into two things that satisfy Jacobian anti-symmetry. There's nothing deep about it. You know, it's just a, it's just a game you're playing. Um, and so, and so that's, that's, uh, that, that, that was, that was, I think one, one big question from this is, is there something special about string theory or is this just something that was going to happen anyway? We knew it had to be a vector, there had to be a vector in there somewhere, right? Yang Mills, you just pull off the vector in the way you want and what's left is going to be, you know, is going to obey uh, color kinematics or field theory double copy. Whether you, you know, maybe you prefer field theory KLT since we're at string level. Um, okay, let me let me highlight uh, another another of the just the 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 big surprises over the past um, over the past uh, few years that really um, that really uh, that really blew me away, and and this is something. That I think we haven't we haven't heard about in amplitudes for a while, but I just like to remind you, um, and it's it's that uh, you know, Bagger Lambert Gustafsson obeys uh, obeys color kinematics. Obeys. Uh, that sounds so strong. How about it's consistent with color kinematics? You can write in a color dual form kinematics kinematics um this is a theory in three dimensions and its color weights don't satisfy a lie algebra its color weights satisfy a so-called three algebra right so so a full amplitude in blg is a sum over quartic graphs not cubic graphs some blg color weights blg numer numerator weights um and and the thing is that this doesn't satisfy this doesn't satisfy a Jacobi relation. It satisfies a, a four term relation. And this is first does interesting things at six points. It's something like you know minus uh, some so so bad at drawing these graphs minus this. This is sort of a W on top minus. W 
on the bottom. Yeah, like this. So something like this, right? So it's not it's not obeying our normal Jacobi type identities. It's obeying these like four term identities, right? But but and this is this is what the color weights do and. And I believe it was like Tristan and 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 uh, and Song and collaborators showed uh, that you could do this um, with a kinematic weights and and this is you know I know some spectacular papers by by Uten and Henrik and and collaborators clarifying this at higher multiplicity the difference between this and and uh, and Maldacena's theory. But in any case, you can play this game, this three dimensional theory, where you absolutely get to striate in terms of color weights and kinematic weights and the kinematic weights are gauge invariant because these color weights aren't uh aren't independent over the entire thing that that they're related to each other um and so these guys rely on this uh for gauge invariance that this guy preserves the gauge invariance of this and so you can ask what you get when you take these guys and you replace it with somebody else that does the same job Right, and that's a spectacular thing. You get super gravity theories. In three dimensions. Right, and these are the same super gravity amplitudes you get with a completely different striation, a completely different pulling apart into a very different algebra, which is a dimensional reduction of, uh, of Yang-Mills. Okay, and so I just, you know, just to make this this clear with pictures, or if it clarifies things with pictures, I always find that pictures help help me clarify things. So, you know, I can write it in terms of two copies of this guy, and they obey their algebras, you know, plus permutations, right? Or I could write it in terms of very different building blocks. Right, the adjoint type building blocks that we know and love from just normal, uh, normal Yang Mills and, and uh, gravity theories. You know, and of course, we have different topologies, but these topologies are related by Jacobi to, uh, to our half ladders. Perhaps the half ladders really form a basis uh, at tree level. So I only need to functionally specify, uh, you know, plus perms. Um, uh, yeah, just to remind you. Right, so. You know, if I know what this guy is, then I can always get this guy. Anyway, um, right, so these are two very different striations. One, one, two, two striations of the same physical predictions. And two building blocks. of different algebraic properties. But ultimately, when you combine them together, they contain the same information. Um, okay, and so, so part of, part of, part of uh, what I'm gonna be talking about uh, it results from this, this sort of this sort of idea that um, that that you really can pull apart the same information into different into different descriptions that uh, that obey their own rules, but you can you can um, but you can unify with these principles of 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 uh, of of really following algebraic properties of graphs, the different types of algebras you could write down in terms of graphs, uh, following that to preserve, you know, ultimately uh, Bose invariance, gauge invariance, um, permutation invariance of your, of your, of your final amplitudes. Um, and, and I should say that uh, th this whole, this whole game 
uh, follows follows from 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 very practical considerations, which is which is we want we want to calculate things uh, as easily as possible. Right. So if you can find another way of going after a particular contact term and its contributions to amplitudes, uh, that's easier. Right. Then you do that, even if ultimately you need to recast it into into a more familiar algebraic structure in order to let it uh, play with friends you've already identified. Um, and uh, and I will be uh, I'll be making all those words. Uh, much sharper, but let me let me just summarize um, what uh, what's going to be happening here. So what was clear is um, D theory. Makes it clear that EFT, that effective field theories, that higher derivative counter terms is a great playground to start exploring some of these ideas. Um, and, uh, and it's important, right? So, you know, beyond, be, besides the fact that uh, ultimately, you know, we, we'd like to identify new physics at accessible experimental scales. Um, there, are, there are formal questions that we'd very much like to have the answer to, right? So for example, we know N equals four supergravity is, has a divergence at four loops in four dimensions. Uh, we still don't know. We still don't know where uh, maximal supergravity has a divergence, but we know that half maximal supergravity has a divergence of four loops in four dimensions. Uh, and there's a very good question. It's an open question. Is there a finite number of counter terms that could be controlling this? Or do we have an infinite number of counter terms that forces us to build back something like string theory in order to make predictions uh, in this theory to all orders? Um, right, and so, so to summarize, uh, in, in, in a big picture, the, the results I'll be talking about, and you've already heard uh, Laurentiu talk about some of this at, 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 at four points um, last year at Amplitudes, so we've got additional results, and uh, you'll see there's additional stuff for me to be talking about, um, is that we see that there is really a finite number of building blocks Up to up to up to trivial stuff, and and I'll I'll clarify what I mean by trivial stuff, uh, in a little bit. But basically, up to up to permutation invariance in terms of scalar weights, a finite number of building blocks span higher derivative adjoint type predictions at each multiplicity. And when I say adjoint time, just to make it really clear, I mean that I can pull into this striation where, uh, where edge by edge, my graphs obey Jacobi and vertex by vertex, uh, their weights obey. Um, the weights of my graphs obey Jacobi and, and vertex by vertex, the, the, the weights obey anti-symmetry. Um, their amplitudes. admit multiple striations along different algebras. Um, and I think one of one of the most uh, one of the most thrilling things that came out of the study for me as somebody who loves, who loves functional relations, who loves functional relations, but secretly abhors huge onzatze, is that, is that there's a composition 
rather than Anzatse. That lets us climb the ladder of higher derivative corrections. And uh, just, just to, I, you know, I don't, I don't know, I don't know if the the verb composition is suggestive enough, but maybe this picture will help that you can start with some higher derivative correction at some, you know, m minus one order, and compose it with kinematics. and get out in a higher derivative at M where these satisfy algebraic properties you desire and this satisfies algebraic properties you desire, whether you're talking adjoint type or permutation, uh, you know, permutation invariant, or as we see, as we get to higher multiplicity, much richer algebraic structures show up as you start allowing FABCs and DABCs to combine in different ways. Um, and uh, something that I'm I'm not going to have uh, I'm I'm almost certain I'm not going to have time to talk about today. But you can so so mostly what I'm going to be talking about uh, today is going to be looking at these higher derivative corrections to to uh, gauge in gravity amplitudes, right? But you can play um, the same games, with fermions and uh and massive gauge amplitudes right gauge amplitudes is massive 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 vectors um massive fermions uh and i should say string theory is special so jd that's about 10 minutes left if there's also should be time for questions okay good um, all right, so let me, let me, let me, uh, let me leap into this. Okay, so, so, so let, let me, let me start with something that's, that's real, that's real simple, which is to study striation. At four points. Okay, so uh, hopefully by now you're you, you're all you're all super comfortable with the fact that I can just write everything in terms of cubic graphs. I can just assign contacts to cubic graphs by multiplying and dividing by propagators, uh, or inverse propagators, um, multiplying by one, um, and uh, and you know, and as as for this game, I'm going to write I'm going to write my predictions in terms of stuff that that. Uh, uh, that both obey adjoint type relations. So C and N both are adjoint type, which mean they both satisfy CS equals CT plus CU and NS equals NT plus NU, right? Um, and because of this, you know, none of these things, uh, none of these things are in a basis. N nothing, nothing over here is in a basis. I can always write U in terms of S and T, and I can always write N U in terms of N S and N T and C S in terms of C T and C U, and so on and so forth. Of course, um, of course, you can go into a basis, right? by exploiting CT equals CS minus CU, right? And what's left in front of these independent directions in color space have to be gauge invariant, of course. These are just, you know, our, uh, our uh, gauge invariant, you know, color ordered or color stripped amplitudes, right? Um, so these must be gauge invariant. 
because because these guys are completely pointing in different directions. And you do the same thing at all multiplicity and expose, uh, you know, gauge invariant ordered amplitudes as you like. Um, of course, I said these these things are colored dual, and that means that there's something special. There's a relationship between these guys. Then. And this guy has to be right that this object has to be permutation invariant. They're all permutation. Um, which means you can organize. You can organize this in terms of a product of permutation invariants. So you can then just rewrite a Yang Mills in terms of minus TNS plus SNT, TCS plus SCT over STU. Uh, and this is, I mean, this is something that, that you know, any, anybody who, who fooled around. <laughs> You know, with uh, with cubic graphs over over the past few decades, uh, has has seen right away um, at at uh, at at tree level at four point. Um, but maybe what's 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 a little less obvious uh, is is that that, or at least a little less obvious to people who weren't familiar with a, a wide spectrum of theories, is that each of these building blocks is rightfully a full amplitude for a particular theory, right? So this guy, which I wrote as ST A Yang Mills, ST, right? This is really the born in felt. This is a full, this is a full amplitude in born in felt. And this guy, which I wrote as ST A by joint scalar, ST is really the full amplitude for the nonlinear sigma model, right? For pions. And this, right, which is ST, a nonlinear sigma model, ST, right, permutation variant, uh, I think many of you recognize as the full amplitude for special Galileans. So what we see is even, even something as venerable uh, and as obviously wanting to be adjoint type as, as Yang Mills, you can write in terms of a permutation invariant product between uh, you know stuff that's right around permutation variants, right, right where this is born and felt, this is nonlinear sigma model. These are full amplitudes and you know full four point amplitude born and felt, full form full point amplitude nonlinear sigma model, and the full four point amplitude in special Galvan. Since I use SG, it often means supergravity. I'll just say special Galileo. Okay, great. Um, right, and it's this same thing, right? This same thing, of course, that we normally write in terms of uh, uh, adjoint type double copy. Um, and so this, this you can think of as a permutation variant way of writing right in KLT at four points. Um, uh, now, now this, this, this game at four, so, so there was nothing, there was nothing special about either of these weights I used uh, that, that had to, you know, that this was particularly color, or that this was specifically kinematics. As long as I'm building a double copy out of stuff that obeys, Jacobi on both copies in terms of adjoint type, I can always find a permutation invariant double copy uh, at four points um, and vice versa. If I start with a permutation invariant double copy, then I can always uh, restriate it into adjoint type. Uh, and, and four point is pretty simple. And it's, it's really simple because permutation invariants are really simple. Uh, things get much, much, much richer at five points. Um, but I think that just as, as an amusing aside, uh, you can play this same sort of, so the reason this works 
is because these guys obey, um, they're ordered amplitudes, the ST trees, right? These are permutation invariant because of field theory, field theory relations, Kleist coif and the N minus three base factorial basis field theory relations. You can set up the same game in string theory where instead of ST, you know, A vector, you'll have sine of S and sine of T and A vector where these guys are permutation invariant because of uh, monogamy relations. All right. Jay, you have five minutes. You got it. I'm getting there. All right. So, um, all right. So to summarize, for things that are compatible with adjoint type double copy. So if I want to start with something like Yang Mills or some vector, you know, that satisfies the size adjoint type stuff. Um, there are two structures I need to pay attention to at four point. Uh, adjoint type. And you can think of dressing things with FABCs in every vertex. So a CS equals FABE, FECD, right? And permutation invariant. Um, right, and so, and you can write all higher derivative corrections to vectors, for example, just as higher derivative corrections to, uh, to color weights and some, some something that encodes vector information and, uh, and propagators, right? In terms of this adjoint type double copy, there are only three building blocks that span all higher derivative color weights you could write down at four points. And there are only eight different vector tensor structures uh, that, that are compatible with adjoint type double copy locally up to permutation invariance. And so with just these three building blocks and these end and spanning permutation variance with sigma two and sigma three, you can entirely climb the, the, the ladder of higher derivative corrections uh, at four points. All right, at five points, it's much richer. And it continues to get richer as you go to higher multiplicity because you have more nouns and verbs at your disposal. And so I don't have time to go into detail on this, but let me just summarize, right? So you do have, adjoint type building blocks where, um, right, where everything obeys uh, anti-symmetry in Jacobi, anti-symmetry in every vertex. Uh, Jacobi on every edge. There's a structure that is relaxed adjoint where um, it's almost adjoint, but but you relax the anti-symmetry on the uh, the middle vertex. So so this is like F A B C F C D E F E F G like this. This is like F three D three F three, but it's a superposition because you're really still imposing Jacobi on each of these edges. You've got hybrid type color structures. So mixtures of four point DABCTs and an adroid type. And of course you have permutation invariant as well. Um, let me just give you just some small stats around these things in summary. Uh, this has a basis of six, uh, six different labels at, um, at five points. This has a basis of five different labels. 
Uh, this has a basis of six different labels. And of course, there's only one of these guys. In terms of closure, in terms of independent higher derivative uh, building blocks of this, closing up to permutation invariance, adjoints close after uh, nine, nine levels of mandel stems, relaxed adjoints close after eight, meaning you get, new, you get no new ones after composing, it's just permutation invariance. These close, uh, these close after, uh, I think it's after nine, and this closes after nine. Um, so these hybrids are like D4. Uh, good. So, so with, with more time, I'd explain how these, uh, these composition works, these compositions work and give examples. Um, but I'd like to, I'd like to close on something that's just a little bit more tantalizing, which is, uh, a scherzo. Uh, that talks about what operators are we spanning? So, so you walk up to some 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 field theorist who's who's not who's not uh, attending amplitudes every year, and you're like, oh, I can write down predictions associated with all the higher derivative operators to vectors, uh, you know, at four points and at five points and so on and so forth. It extends to all multiplicity, it's great. And they're like, sure, fine. But what do those operators look like that generate those predictions? Um, and so, so what, I'd like to, what I'd like to tantalize you with uh, without going into details because I don't have time is a double copy effective actions um, or a QCD approach to space time. And this will be appearing soon with uh, Laurentiu and Suna. Um, and, and, uh, and so we're gonna write down our operators that make uh, color kinematics absolutely manifest at the level of the action let you uh, move back and forth with the predictions in uh, all the web of theories as you like at the level of the action. And so you could be asking, how do we do this? And I'll tell you the answer, we cheat in the best possible way. We promote Uh, amplitudes directly to operators. Um, so directly from N field amps to N field operators. Uh, and um, and so you're really you're really writing down your action in a way that makes it uh, very clear that it's a function of the amplitudes you're making predictions with. Um, we hard code locality with a few tricks. Uh, and these tricks, the first time, the first time I've seen them used uh, was, was when, when Daru was writing down um, effective actions in open string theory, and then later Medina and collaborators were playing uh, similar games. Um, gauge invariance, is manifest multiplicity by multiplicity. You know, but this isn't this isn't something this isn't something uh, new. This is something familiar to us. If you've ever you know written down uh, the perturbative expansion of gravity, you know, like root minus g r. So the idea we are at minus four minutes now. Should we okay. open that the discussion or? Yeah, let me just let me just let me just land land home this 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 point. Um, that uh, that if you write down 
if you write down only up to the quadratic interaction with gravity, everything you'd write down up to uh, up to four point is gauge invariant, but then you're missing a piece that's gauge invariant for five point, right? So this 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 game of encoding encoding operators in terms of amplitude has has very much uh, the same the same sort of the same sort of feel, but this plays very well with uh, with with color kinematics because the action is a machine machine for generating predictions with explicit with explicit permutations so you only have to write down a very simple part like say the dressing of one of your multi-peripheral letters and your action will take care of, you know, promoting Feynman rules will take care of promoting that to all the permutations. Um, and with that, uh, I'll just, I'll just let it go. And I welcome questions about any of the stuff I've talked about. So maybe we can have one or two questions. I see Lance unmuted. Do you have a question, Lance? Well, sort of. It's not exactly a fair question. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Give me an unfair question. I mean, I, I was just kind of wondering about the, we heard some new methods for trying to establish color kinematics duality through equations of motion from Cliff. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering how they would play with uh, higher derivatives or with the Z theory uh, color kinematics where it seems That's, like it's a much richer structure. Is that a fair question? It's not. Yeah, I no, I think it's a fair. I mean, so, so, so of course, of course, that's a very new result, right? That just, it just came out within the past week or so. But fortunately, one of the co-authors is joining us at Northwestern uh, as a postdoc. And I look forward to spending a lot of time with James as, as, as we play with this. I, I would say, I would say that that approach is spectacularly resonant with the types of discussions I'm talking about, where they're they're pulling apart Yang Mills into F3, and then you know this gauge this gauge color, right? So they're pulling apart Yang Mills in a very different way, um, but I think I think very similar in spirit. Uh, and and of course they're focusing you know they're focusing on equations of motion, whereas I'm you know focusing just directly on uh, amplitude predictions. But I I see I see remarkable synchronicity. Uh, in the future. Hmm. Any other questions? I just wondered, JJ, the exclusions Henrietta was talking about, about effective operators. Can you see this in this formalism as well? Um, so, so, uh, What's the right way to say this? So, so because what I'm doing is quite explicitly building local gauge invariant stuff that you can describe in terms of adjoint, adjoint type, you know, in terms of stuff that satisfies Jacobian anti-symmetry out of, you know, and, and, and literally using these different building blocks that have different algebraic properties to combine them into things that obey Jacobian anti-symmetry, so I can use them with my favorite characters, like you know vectors. Um, uh, it, 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 there's the the the, uh, the spotlight's in a different place, right? Okay. It's it, it's 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 um, you you know I'm, I the the way the way to see that you can't write something. So since we know what the basis is, you can use that as a basis to try to land on a prediction. And if you can't see that prediction in the basis, then it's ruled out. Then you can't actually pull that prediction apart into Jacobian anti-symmetry. And so you can ask, is string theory special or is a closed string special? Uh, is there, for example, is there a, a gravitational amplitude at four point that's gauge invariant Right, some higher derivative, you know, graviton spin to gauge invariant at four point local operator, so you don't have to worry about factorization that you can't pull apart into something that satisfies size adjoint type relations. Um, and the answer is absolutely yes. 
uh, and it's at much higher derivatives, uh, but it satisfies its own type of double copy. And 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 I'll be talking about uh, mm. we'll, we'll 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 be we'll be talking about that in the future. Okay. Okay. So but maybe we theory is special. Okay. Maybe we have a, court, a short break here before 